evening, church. How's everybody doing? I say good evening, church. How's everybody doing? All right. Who's ready to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? If you are, please stand to your feet. Let's get ready to begin. So, Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this evening, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Life Church returns to give you all the praise and all the glory, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Magnify your name, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Father God. Receive the praise and all the glory tonight, Father God. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us. Here we go. Father God, we are here for you, to you, to you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let you find Yes, Lord. Let our shout be your anthem, your renown. Fill the skies. We are here for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. Yes, Lord. We're here for you, Father. We are here for you. Yes, Jesus, to you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one. Your fire fall down to you, to you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, get ready to receive it, let your fire fall down. Open arms, open arms, receive it. Let your fire fall down. Yes, Father God, let your fire, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty oh, God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Let every heart atone, let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Oh, Father God, you're welcome. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
you that every voice. We welcome you with praise. Every soul awake. So let's just praise him a little bit. Praise him that he is the Alpha and the Omega. Praise him that he made a way to for, be forgiven of sins, that he made a way that we could receive healing, that he made a way that we can come boldly to his throne room and receive his grace. Let's praise him that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We praise him for the healing that we receive, the healing that he made available, for by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. We praise you, Father God, for the forgiveness of our sins, that no matter what our week looked like, we can confess our sins to you. For your word tells us if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Father, that we're able to receive that gift, the gift of forgiveness of sins, that you're able to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, that we can walk boldly before you as a holy people set aside for the purposes that you have. And just as we were singing, we are here for you, God. We are here for you. We are here to worship you. We are here to praise you. We are here to hear from you, Father. We are here for you, Father. Jesus, you said that the world will know we're your disciples by our love for one another. So we thank you for this time to gather together, to love one another, to bear one another's burdens. Father, we pray that you bless us this evening. May we grow in love to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Just turn to someone, shake their hand, and say, I'm glad to let them know you're glad to see them this evening. Glad to see you this evening. Miss Angel sitting by herself at this table. Don't let her sit by herself next time. Yes. Well, God bless you guys. I just have one announcement. As we wrap up June, July 4th is right around the corner. And we're going to celebrate July 4th on July 3rd, right after service. We are going to have a cookout with hot dogs, hamburgers, water slides for all the kids. So I want to encourage you again to use this day when we celebrate the birthday of our nation, when we celebrate our freedom, use this day to freely, while we still can, freely invite people to fellowship, freely invite people to come join us for this day as we celebrate the birthday of America. So challenging everyone, join us July 3rd, right after service, hot dogs, hamburgers, water slides for all the kids. All right? Um, Pastor Sam is out of, uh, Pastor Sam. Pastor Sam isn't here, but our senior pastor, Pastor Kim, isn't here. Um, he took his wife, uh, Cheryl, up to Dallas to have a procedure done on her knees. The procedure was done this morning, so please be praying for her recovery. Um, everything went well this morning. But let's pray for um, 
a recovery and a healing, a healing where she'll be restored better than ever, where she'll be able to walk in the abundant life that Jesus provided. Um, also this week, our friend uh, Angela Volinsky also had knee surgery. So please be praying for her too. So both of them, let's pray that we can see God move in their lives as God has, uh, as we have done the physical by doing the um, surgeries provided uh, for them. Let's pray that God will do the miraculous and he'll move divinely in their life, that they'll be able to move and praise God freely and enjoy the life that Jesus has for them. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're blessed. Uh, Brother Emmanuel or Carl is going to come tonight with a word. He's going to be teaching us. So will you guys welcome uh, Emmanuel or Carl uh, this evening? Life Church. <laughs> Amen. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to be here to minister his word to you tonight. Um, it's only by the grace of God that that could happen. And I don't take it lightly because I know what it means when people of God gather together such as this, expecting to hear from God. I'm only standing here tonight as a vessel of God. The message God has given to me is not my message. It's a message from God for his people for such a time as this. So as you hear this message tonight, it is my prayer that you will open your hearts to God. May the Holy Spirit minister to you, speak to you in the way that you can best understand it. So I thank God for this opportunity tonight. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to go with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know that says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How thou prove him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, Savior, Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more, to trust him more. When you depend on God, you cannot go wrong. When you come to where you trust God for all aspects of your life, 
you cannot go wrong. That's what God expects from us. Let us read from Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. It says, For a righteous man, for a righteous person, falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of disaster. For a righteous person falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in time of disaster. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for such an opportunity. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your plan. Father, I pray and commit this time to your hand. Father, I pray that you use this opportunity to minister to your people. This is the moment. This is the time. I am your vessel and I humble myself to you as a vessel asking you to use me to speak to your people. And I thank you because you will do that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight we're going to speak on the topic, disaster. I'm sorry, disappointment. Disappointment to victory is the topic. Disappointment to victory. What is disappointment? Disappointment is when you are unhappy, when you are discouraged because things doesn't happen the way you planned it. Disappointment is when you expect something to happen for some reason, whether it is you by your fault or whether it is for any reason beyond your control, but things happen not to work out the way you want it. The enemy wants to use disappointment in our life to rob us of the joy that God has for us. That God has freely given to me and you. Disappointment, if not controlled, if not checked, if not handled properly, can lead us to so many issues, so many problems. It can cause anger. It can cause even death. It can cause frustration in life, depression in life. If the dis disappointment you have in life is not controlled. So tonight, we, God is going to speak to us regarding how we can come from disappointment to victory. You know, uh, sometimes I feel disappointed. I am 56 years old now. 56 years younger now. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes I get disappointed with myself because I can't do things as fast as I used to do them before. I used to run track and field in high school. I played soccer in high school. I played soccer in college. And I refereed. I mean, I was a U.S. Ref referee. For 16 years, I did high school games, college games, professional games for 16 years. And now, I only, due to time, limited time, I only do adult games when I can, maybe once a week, just to keep going. So sometimes, I get disappointed with myself. When I see something on the ground, I want to pick it up. I don't pick it up as fast as I used to. It frustrates me. I be staring at it and wondering, is that important? Is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to bend down and pick it up? And when I finally go down, then I'm wondering, I want to get up as, as quickly as I can. And then my body is telling me, you need to slow down. Sometimes, in my house, I climb upstairs, and uh, something tells me you can jump stairs, like I used to jump, skip three 
steps and jump. Then I hear this voice that says, you better use God's wisdom. <laughs> you can't do that. But that's not the kind of disappointment we are going to talk about tonight. Tonight we focus on the disappointments that causes you pain. The disappointment that frustrates you in life. The disappointment that God wants to get your attention for. Perhaps I suffered my first disappointment when I was a teenager. My dad, who was um, a minister, pastor, for 32 years under Assemblies of God Church in Nigeria, he passed away in, when I was in high school. That really tore my heart apart. I could not understand it. Why would God not save my father? I expected my father would live 999 years and beyond. I didn't expect there would be an end for him. For him to be gone, I was so mad with God. I refused to pray. I refused to do anything concerning God. I don't want to hear it. I felt hurt. I felt God has really done me terrible thing. Perhaps that's how you're feeling tonight. Perhaps that's for you. Somehow in your life, you have felt discouraged and disappointed in your life. You feel like God things should be set aside. I have been there. I have done it. Because there is something in your life that happened that disappointed you. That used to be me. I went along angry. I said, angry teenager. Disappointed at this God that did this to me. Took away my fight away. But thanks be to God that God pursued me. He never failed me. He pursued me. He went after me until he got my attention to understand that everything was according to his plans. At that time, I did not understand it. I did not understand what it means that God's plan is above my plan. That my plan should be under, submissive to God's plan. It did not make any sense to me at the time. So I was discouraged. That was my first experience of being disappointed in life. Until God restored it, then I began to feel the joy and the presence of God in my heart. But in the middle of me going through all those things, God never left me. He pursued me. He was with me. I know I can feel, I felt the presence of God in my life. Disappointment. Many people go through disappointment. They don't know how to handle it. You know, Jesus warned us. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome. That is God, Jesus telling us ahead of time, you are going to have some troubles. You are going to have some disappointments. Things are not going to work out every day according to how you planned it. People are going to offend you. You are going to be disappointed when you want an apple and you can't have an apple. But all you can get is pineapple. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you are going to face disappointment in life. Jesus warned us. It wasn't a surprise. So are you feeling disappointed tonight? Disappointment comes when you trust someone and they offended you. They hurt you. Disappointment can come when you have a high expectation of yourself. All people put a higher expectation of you, but you couldn't meet it. Meet it. And they hurts you. It goes after you. People see you, they talk down on you. 
you failed. You are a disappointment in life. You are not good enough. Some of us can't even forgive ourselves because of our past failures. And because we can't do that, it hinders your progress going forward. We cannot do what God wants us to do. We cannot release ourselves from the hurt and pain and disappointments that we had so that we can do what, what God wants us to do. Now you see why God wants for us to just understand what, that, what we are going through and how we can draw ourselves or come close to God because he's been beckoning on us. He's been calling us. He's been trying to draw our attention to him. Because actually when you go through disappointment, it's a process that God sometimes uses to teach us things in life. God uses disappointment to draw our attention to him. God uses disappointment to teach us lessons. When we go through disappointment, when we go in and we come out on the other end, when you look back and see where you came from and how you have been through that, you will understand how you have grown from where you were to where you are now. So sometimes the disappointment can be good. We have a God that uses what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for our own good. So if we come to where we can get a good grasp of who our God is, we understand who our God is, we trust him that everything works out according to his plan. Now you trust God that God can make mistakes on your behalf, that God cannot fail you, that all you need to do is to come submit yourself 100% to God. Whatever God leads you, whatever he directs you, you go and you trust him. When you come to that point, you begin to see the light of the day. God doesn't hate us. God doesn't feel the disappointment we feel. We are the ones punishing ourselves. When we feel disappointed, we talk to God about it. Let the peace of God marinate in your heart. Let the peace of God radiate in your heart. Let the peace of God just settle things down and Ask yourself, what is the lesson that God is trying to teach me here? What am I supposed to learn with this process, in the process that I'm going through? How can I come out, out of this stronger and better? Kenya West had a song that says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Your disappointment is more than, not more than you. Remember that you, we have a God that promised he will never allow anything more than we can handle to come upon us. That is a promise. So if you're feeling disappointment, disappointment or something happened, is happening to you, you're going through a process. You better understand that your God knows what you're going through because he didn't magically come to you. There is nothing that happens in your life that God is not aware of. If he allows it, that's because he wants you to go through it. That means it's walking according to the plan of God. That means God wants to use that process to elevate you to a different level. You cannot be a baby all the time drinking baby milk. At some point, you're going to have to start eating meat. You're going to have to go from step one to step two, and you're growing. And you keep growing in the Lord, growing in his understanding, growing in his knowledge and wisdom of God. That's what God expects from us. Don't feel discouraged. Instead, Allow what you're going through to be an opportunity to come closer to God. And that's what God expects from us. Disappointment teaches us how to be appreciative of things. Sometimes we are obnoxious. Sometimes we, don't, we are not appreciative. We are not appreciative of the blessings that God has bestowed on upon us. We are not appreciative of things in our life. We get a Toyota, we want Mercedes, we get Mercedes, we want something else. We get a house, we want something bigger and bigger. 
But we forget that God has a mansion in heaven. That's what we're going to be pursuing for. We're going to have to come to the understanding of knowing that you are not a disappointment. God doesn't expect you that you can be, a, you can be perfect. He doesn't expect that every day is going to be all good for you. He wants you to go through the process. Remember that there is something called Satan that goes in presence of God to talk about you, to accuse you. He's an accuser of a brethren. So when you're going through stuff, when you're going through things, could it be that God wants to take glory out of what you're going through? Could it be that that would be an encouragement to say, if God, my loving God, will allow me to go through this process, I know that it's morning coming. I'm going to get out of this. Then you go through whatever you are going with the joy of the Lord. Let it be a time that you can present yourself to God. Let it be a challenging time that you can glorify God. Let it be a time that you can say, God, what more do you want from me? Disappointment can be an opportunity for us to learn. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. It doesn't last permanently. It's just for a little while. We may not like it. Maybe you have a family member that was sick. People have prayed and prayed like my father. And then God decides it's time for him to go. So what else can you do? You leave it into God's hands. He is God. We are not God. He knows better. He has bigger opportunity. I mean, bigger vision than we do. He has a bigger plan and he knows. He sees more than we, what we see. We just trust him. If this is God's will, glory be to God. You know, sometimes the most difficult disappointment to go through is self-disappointment. When you are disappointed with yourself. Maybe you, you submitted or applied you, an application somewhere. You are expecting to get approved and you get denied. Maybe because you didn't really do well during the interview. Maybe you expected the life that you're living today would be different. But for some reason, you never did some things right. And you can't seem to forgive yourself. Maybe you are torn apart from two different countries. And you don't even know why you are here. Maybe there is something you've been expecting in your life. And you've been praying, but it hasn't happened. And you are disappointed with yourself. Could it be that all things are working together for your good? Could it be that the wrong exit that you made on the street is for good? Because if you had continued, you would have had an accident. Could it be? Self-disappointment. One, one of the people that went through or experienced self-disappointment was Peter. Peter in the Bible, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He sworn loyalty to Jesus. Peter said, if everyone will deny you, I will never abandon you. Jesus told him before the, um, I, I, I want to use the word rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter couldn't understand, how can I deny Jesus? But when it was time for Peter to stand up for Jesus, what did he do? He felt Jesus. He disappointed Jesus. Not one time, not two times, because one can be a mistake. Two can be a mistake. Three, you are in. It's serious. If it had happened once, we could have, we could have said it was a mistake. But it happened two times. 
He had two years, two times. He heard it, Peter. Are you a follower of Jesus? He said no. He denied Jesus two times. Then it happened the final third time. All of a sudden, the devil left him. He remembered what Jesus told him. Before the rooster crows through three times, crows, you're going to disappoint me, abandon me three times. He remembered. Then he went outside and wept bitterly. Wept bitterly. That almost caused him, that disappointment almost caused him his ministry. If it's not by the, because of the grace of God. But Jesus prayed for Peter. Do you think that Jesus didn't know that Peter would disappoint, me, would disappoint him? He knew. Because Jesus told him ahead of time. But Jesus prayed for him. Knowing that it's going to happen. And he says, when you return, when you return, you child of God, you feel like Jesus has failed you. You are walking away from Jesus instead of coming into Jesus. When you return and you come back, then go to my ministry that I have given you. Take care of my flocks, my people. That was his calling. But Peter almost lost his ministry because of disappointment. But thank God that Jesus prayed for him. And Jesus, the same Jesus is praying for you. When you're going through things, or when things are about to come to you, Jesus, you can count on him, is already praying for you. He's already praying on your behalf. He is dear with his father interceding on your behalf. Praying for you. He understands your situation more than you understand it. So he is also praying for you. You think you've made mistakes? He wants you to turn around just like Peter did. Turn around and repent. If you did something wrong, repent and come back to Jesus. Have peace and pursue whatever God has Whatever God wants from you. Has God called you into something? Have God said something to you? Have God promised you something? And he's preparing you because of the disappointments that you're having. Not to say that every disappointment is what Jesus, God wants. No, sometimes it's the devil. But if God allows it, then it's for a purpose. It's so that God will take glory. From whatever the disappointment is, whatever that came to you, you are going through. So you should be encouraged when you're facing something. Then you can remember. I know sometimes we have short memories and it's all human. We have short memories. You remember what God has done for you in the past. You recount them. Sometimes you might have a journal or write them down so that you don't forget them. In Israel... In the past, what they used to have is a staff. You've heard about the staff of Moses. You've heard about the staff. They walk with their staff. You know what? They keep track of the mark on those tracks, if you have seen one. So they can sometimes recount. I know what this mark means. I know what this one meant to me. In that way, they don't forget it. That's what God meant when he said, write it on the tablets of your heart. So that you can remember all the time when doubt creeps in and when the enemy uses your disappointment against you and he accuses you, you failed. That's your end. Then you can remind him what God has done for you in the past. And you can encourage yourself and say, I will go through this by the grace of God. Whatever that you're going through tonight, whatever disappointment you're facing tonight, God is aware of it. He is aware of it. Moses went through disappointment. Moses sacrificed himself, his life, for the people of Israel. He led them out of Egypt from slavery 
to the desert near the mountain of Sinai. He trusted his brother Aaron to watch over the people so that he can go to the mountain of Sinai to pray with God for 40 days. 40 days. But when he came back, he was very disappointed. Why? Because Aaron has made a golden calf for the people to worship as God. Moses felt disappointed. If you look in the Bible, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 20, this is Moses saying, Moses said, so I gave up my despair, questioning the value of all my hard work. That is a man that is disappointed. Everything I have done, all the accusations that have been thrown on me, all my suffering, all that I have given up for you. And you can't even worship the living God that brought us out of slavery from Egypt. The same God that they witnessed with their two eyes parted the sea so that they can walk on the dry ground. And you don't trust that God. And you're going to make one for yourself. He was disappointed. But you know what? Moses handled it well. The Bible tells us that Moses went to God. He took his problem to God. Moses prayed for God's forgiveness for Israel. Moses talked to Aaron about what he did. But he prayed for God's forgiveness upon his people. You know, it is during difficult times. Difficult times is when you see a great leader. And it was during this difficult time that Moses showed up as a great leader. He prayed for his people, for, for, for God's forgiveness. And God had his prayer. In Exodus chapter 32 verse 34, God said to Moses, Go, lead the people, and my angel will go before you. God is telling him, go and continue into what I have called you to do. If you are going through disappointment or you have been through disappointment, it doesn't cancel the calling of God in your life. It doesn't cancel the assignment that God has given you. It doesn't cancel anything. Disappointment do not cancel the assignment from God, nor the presence of God. God is there before the disappointment. God is there when you're going through it. He doesn't leave you. He promised us he will never leave nor forsake us. Only if we can be sensitive enough to know that God is still with me, even at this moment. Because if the devil understands that you know who you are in Christ Jesus, the devil may back out from you. But when he sees doubts, he sees that you don't know who you are. He opens the door real wide for him to come. And to torment you with your past, your, with your past failures. With things that you have done and regrets in the past. You can't seem to forgive yourself. You can't seem to leave it alone. You can't seem to move forward. It's like you are stuck because of what happened in the past. And the devil is dancing around you all the time, enjoying it because you are tormenting yourself. You can't even believe that God, the, you can't even believe the forgiveness of God in your life. You pray over it, the same thing, over and over and over. And God is wondering, I forgave you already. Why are you asking me for the 99th time? Because you, you have doubts. You can't let go. You can't give it up and move forward to the next chapter that God has for you in your life. Are you feeling disappointed today? Are you feeling disappointment today? God is speaking to you. You know, Joseph in the Bible felt disappointed too. He had a dream. And he shared his dream with his brothers. What did they do? They get jealous about his dream. And they sold him into slavery. He was an innocent young boy. They sold him into slavery. 
And when he got there, eventually he ended up in prison. Accused of things he didn't do. But God knows, knew where he was. And God never left him alone. And God pursued him. And God turned what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. Is that you tonight? Is that you tonight? You've been accused. You've been offended. Your heart has been torn apart and broken. You have people that don't trust you. And you don't even know what else to do. You can't even go to your high school reunion because all they're going to do is to talk bad about you. You can't go and meet your old friends because all they're going to do is to talk about you and accuse you of what has happened in the past. Is that you? It starts with you forgiving yourself. It starts with you releasing those past to God so that you can move forward to what God wants you to do. I want to tell you about a man in the Bible called, no, not in the Bible, a man that, is, that, that was here in Texas, actually from Chicago. His name is Horatio Spafford. Horatio Spafford. He is a Christian, he was a Christian lawyer. He was a Christian lawyer that went through disappointment. Let me tell you a little bit about what this man went through. He was a successful lawyer. But in 1871, in 1871, this man's son, four-year-old son died. 1871. The next year, by the way, the person I'm talking to you about was the man that wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. In 1872, the next year, this great Chicago fire, I mean, there was a Chicago fire that burned the area and burned his estate, wiped up everything on fire. He lost everything. All the money that he has gotten from his uh, being a lawyer, everything gone. His business, everything gone. In 1873, and not the next year, he sent his wife and four daughters to Europe. On their way to Europe, their ship collided with the Scotland ship. And the ship sank. The only survivor was his wife. When his wife got to the land, he sent a telegram. A telegram to his husband and said that simply said, saved alone saved alone when this man heard this he felt disappointed three years ago he lost his four-year-old son the next year he lost his estate now he lost his four daughters so by the time, he was out of town, and that's why he couldn't travel with them. He wanted to travel later to go meet them. Later on, when he came into town, the fire that was burning also burned his own house where he lived. Now, he doesn't have an office. He doesn't have a house to live on. And he was broke. So when this man, Horatio Spafford, thought about all these things that had happened to him, he didn't know what else, as a Christian man, he didn't know what else to do than to write something down. He wrote, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. And the song says, Do Satan Shubafet Do trials shall come. Let this beast assurance control that Christ 
heart regarded my helpless estate and had shed his own blood for my soul. He poured his heart into that song. Instead of feeling disappointment, he took it on a positive way. To write a song that is still present in our life. This happened in 1871, but it's still going on today. This is a man that trusted God. A man that gave all to God. A man that you, you can relate yourself and say, you know what, this somebody in life can go through what he went through. I can go through that and come out, out of it, in a positive way that you will give glory to God. That's what God requires from us. That's what God is requiring for, from me and you. So as children of God, we need to come to where we need to be still to know that he is God. God is saying to me and you, child of God, child of God, be still and know that I am God. I am in control. There is nothing that happens in your life that I'm not aware of. Be still. Trust me. You are going somewhere. You are on a journey. If somebody is going to drive this vehicle, trust me to be the one to drive it. Because I know the destination where I'm taking you. You don't know how to get there. But God can take you there. All we need to do is to follow his footsteps, to follow his dictates, to follow his direction. Wherever he leads us, you will go. You surrender all to him and say, God, to you be the glory given. Whatever you want, I will do. Whatever you lead me, I will go. How do you handle your disappointments? Psalm 73, 26 says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. Are you letting God be in control of what you're going through? Or is what you're going through in control of you, your life? All we need to do is to realize that disappointments will come. It's a normal way of life. It's been there ages. It's part of life. I know that if God be with me, who can be against me? You surrender all to God and let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him take away those disappointments. That is a better way that we can handle disappointments. For the interest of time, we don't have time to talk about some other people in the, in the Bible, like Job, that went through disappointment. There is a reason why God allowed that to be in the Bible, so that we can learn from them. They went through things in life also, that we can learn that we are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. And he promised he will never leave nor forsake us. Are you afraid? Submit that to God in prayer. You go to God in prayer. Are you hurt? Are you harboring or holding unforgiveness in your heart? You release it to God. Let that not cost you heaven. It's not worth it. Have you been hurt in life? You can't seem to forgive. God is calling your attention. you got to let all those disappointments to go. Release them to God. Let God lift those burdens away from you and release you and give you the joy of the Lord so that you can move on to what God wants you to do. 
How do you handle your disappointments? Number one, you spend time with God through scripture and prayer. You spend time with God. It is important to spend time with God, studying the word of God. When you're going through difficult times, discouragement, disappointment, it's an opportunity for you to invest more time with God. God will direct you on some scriptures that can encourage you. God will direct you to listen to some music that will be helpful to you, and God will speak to you through those music. It is an opportunity for you not to avoid coming to worship in the house of God. The Bible tells us, do not forget the assembly of the brethren. It is not a time to skip church because you're going through things. Instead, it's a time to come running to God. Every opportunity that you see, you run to God and let God minister to you. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. How do you handle disappointment? It is an opportunity for God to correct us. He loves us. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 6, he, love, he loves and disciplines those he calls his own. God disciplines those he loves. Just like you discipline your child. Not because you hate them. Not because you want to kill them or hurt them. Because of love. You want to correct them. That's how God is. When he allowed disappointment or things to come across our way, it's for our, our own good. We learn from them. Disappointment reveals our level of faith with God. Because when you're going through disappointment and your faith is not strong in God, it will be revealed. And that's when you can't stop complaining. That's when you can't stop whining. That's when you can't stop calling everybody you think that could be helpful to you. But except God. You're not calling the main one you should be calling. You're not com complaining to God. But you're focusing on taking your problem to other people. So God wants us to handle our disappointments better. Disappointment, when we face it, God doesn't want us to stay down. He wants us to get up. Christians are people who, when they fell, they get up. If we fail, we get up. We ask for God's forgiveness, and we get up. If we fail, we learn from what God wants us to learn, and we get up. You don't stay down. If you fail, you don't stay down. You get up again, and you keep going because you haven't reached the destination yet. When you get to heaven, then you can praise God because you have made it. But while you are still on a journey, you don't stop. You don't fall down. You fell down and stay down. You get up and you keep going. Dust yourself and you keep going. So long as God is keeping you alive, there is a reason behind it. Let your life glorify God. Let your life be something others can learn from and glorify God. Others can see and say, glory be to God. Has God given you any talents? Has God given you something, a gift that you can use for God? This is an opportunity for you to use it for God. Don't sit around and waiting. Your time is going. Use it for the Lord. Maybe you feel because of your disappointment, you cannot serve God. Because of your disappointment, you're not good enough. You disqualify yourself. God is saying, no, no, no. That's not how I see you. I see you as my child that I love. I see you as my child that I have forgiven. I died for you. I sanctified you in the precious blood of the Lamb. And you are saved. You are righteous. When I look at you, I look at the righteousness of God. No need to sit down and complain. You run to your father. If the devil comes to accuse you, you tell him, I have the righteousness of my father. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. You surround yourself with the word of God. Be a strong Christian. 
Don't let the enemy torment your life day after day because of disappointment that you have gone through in life. That can be changed through how you respond to disappointment. God wants you to come to him when you are feeling disappoint disappointed. You know, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for good of those who love him. I will read it again. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So you know that whatever that you're going through today, God loves you. You are not alone. He wants you to know you are not a failure. Regardless of what you've been told, regardless of what you have been accused, regardless of how the enemy looks at you, you or how people look at you, you are not a failure. God has a reason to keep you alive today. If you wake up in your, from your bed in the morning, you stand and you thank God and you worship God and you stand for God and you make sure the day will not go by without you giving glory to God through the life that you live. Let what you have gone through in the past become a testimony. And it will be a testimony and give God glory depending on how you respond going forward. You can stand strong today for Jesus. You can stand strong today to do what God has called you to do. By responding better, don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your failure and disappointment hold you back. You can move forward because that's what God desires from you and me. Amen? May God bless his word today. So I would like for... For us here, as we come to the end of this, to just pray for each other. You know, we are in a group here. If we can have a gathering of three, four people together, minister to each other, and have time to pray for each other. Amen? Let us do that. Yeah, if you will, um, gather with the people that are around you, and let's spend some time in prayer. Brian's going to play, and let's bear one another's burdens as Emmanuel leads.